both of the above. So let's take a look to this. So class, uh, pre in the previous lesson, we are in the verse number 134. We are in the sixth pyramid. We have already complete the pyramid of the dana, giving, and we have complete the, the pyramid of um, precept. Okay, now we are in the pyramid of the patience. Okay, we are still talk about patience. Uh, huh? So let's take a look. Huh? Verse one three four is our pre in our previous lesson. What benefit is there in being angry at others? It increases the sorrow and suffering of oneself and others. The fire of anger burns up the root of goodness, while patience encompasses the five virtues. Huh? So we talk about the tolerance. Uh, huh? So uh, the angry at, at others and seek revenge. So there will be no ending. Lah. Okay. Huh? Yeah. So uh, recently there's a war in Gaza Strip. Huh? Uh, this is the war in between Israel and also the Palestine. Huh? Actually, uh, in the religion, expect they are the brother huh? because uh, they share with the same Allah. But it end up uh, the, the war even worse, uh, even though even though they are brother, you see. So sometimes uh, <laughs> Uh, this is from religion expect, expect, but uh, there is uh, uh, also, uh, uh, I mean, uh, there's also conflict uh, regarding the land, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the area, uh, and it's quite complicated because of the intervention from the USA or uh, the Israel, and <laughs> at the end, it ends up uh, the whole Israel was surround, surrounded by all the enemies, you see, <laughs> something is very funny, uh, but but, but the way I see is, uh, even though so many enemies surrounding Israel, it makes them stronger because uh, the land is very, I mean, uh, it's, it's a desert, you know, the whole piece of land is desert, but they're very smart. They are able to provide one third of the agricultural product to the European country and no petrol. So they invent the electric car. So you see or not, even though, I mean, uh, uh, I mean the, in the objective view are uh, sometimes uh, if you, if you, if you, I mean, uh, if, if let's say your God uh, don't really take care of you, huh? so you have to look for yourself. So this, this, they are the smartest people. Huh? But anyway, uh, it seems things will be complicated uh, once it involves so many parties and also a lot of controversy, it involves the religions and also the land. Huh? So you see, uh, it's quite hard We say, uh, oh, you forgive to each other. Not that easy. Uh, we don't know how, how will the war ending. And the most pitiful is the children. Uh, the children, they are all innocent. But they all are always uh, in the field. Huh? So we are so lucky our children in Malaysia all stay in this country in harmony. Huh? So we later on we transfer marriage to them. Huh? Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, there, there will be some solution one day. Huh? Okay, huh? So of course, uh, uh, class, uh, there will be some karma in Wolf. Huh? Huh? So do you remember huh? the family of the Shakya? Huh? Even though uh, Shakya Muni tried his heart uh, to protect them uh, uh, from uh, the genocide, uh, 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 I mean, and from uh, the, what, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, Liu Li Wang huh? is the king of the what, uh, Liu Li Wang. Huh? But finally, cannot all, I mean, uh, the, Shak the whole races of the Shakya all had been, I mean, all undergone the genocide, all died already, passed away already. Huh? Even though Shakyamuni he himself uh, cannot save you see. Uh, so many things we can't do. Uh, huh? If there's some karma involved and also with the present complication of the issue, uh, we, can't, we can't do many things. Uh, huh? Okay, next, let's take a look. Huh? So uh, we are in this paragraph, uh, day four. Huh? So Elena, can you please uh, write it out, huh? Elena? Huh? Therefore, one should not take revenge, but should calmly tolerate all. Also, taking revenge on one's enemy will not undo the harm one has received. It only increases sorrow and suffering for oneself and others. One allows one's anger to flare up and one becomes restless and distressed. Sometimes one may even recklessly cause greater damage. Returning hatred for hatred will not solve any problem. Thus, it is said, do not hate hatred, for eventually hatred will end. Patience can subdue hatred. This is called the Dharma of the Tathagata. Practicing giving and keeping the precepts is not very easy. One thought of tolerance, one feat of anger, and all of one's accumulated virtue is destroyed. Because of anger, it is said, an instant Buddhist can destroy hundreds of kappas of the good they have generated by giving and keeping the precepts. Anger is therefore described as the fire that burns up 
the good roots of virtue. If one investigates and understands the angles, flaws, and virtues of patience, then one will be able to use reason to subdue anger and afflictions. The faults of being angry are several. Disagreeable appearance. Once anger has arisen, one becomes excited and one's countenance instantly becomes ugly. Cosmetologist says that if one gets angry frequently, one's face ages more quickly. Tactless speech. Once anger has replaced reason, a person may not understand what someone else is saying. Being impulsive and nervous, one loses the ability to debate and to express oneself. Abandonment by good people, the good friends of those who frequently are hot-tempered and angry will leave them because it is not worth becoming enemies. Breaking the precepts, when one is angry and bent on revenge, one has no regard for anything. One stops at nothing. One may kill, steal, lie, engage in sexual misconduct. Regression. If the karma of anger accumulates, one will fall into evil destinies when old age and death arrive. Okay, thank you so much, Shahan. Can I just finish off the last paragraph? Let's see, huh? it's too many already. Huh? A very small paragraph. In. Okay, yes, please continue. Huh? Since one thought of intolerance can lead to such evil consequences, how can one try not to subdue it? Conversely, if one can tolerate hatred, one has all five virtues: an agreeable appearance, tactfulness, good friends, non-violation of the precepts, and progress towards the Buddha way. Although patience appears in the Dhamma common to the five vehicles, the patient that tolerates the intolerable is found only in the Bodhisattva bits. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you.
Yeah, Sally, Elena, can you please check for me uh, the reference for number 32? Yeah. From what text is it? Lah? Thirty-two is Avadanas. Correct, Sally. Avadana. You see, uh, this verse uh, do not hate hatred. Very good, I see. Oh, Avadana. Okay, uh, class. If I'm not mistaken, Avadana is in regards the story, uh, the past historical, uh, the past historical even of the Shakyamuni. Avadana, right? So let me check for you, huh? Avadana. A B A D N A lah, huh? Avadana. N -A. N -A. Avadana, right? This is all right. S, got the S. S, uh, Avadanas. Okay, uh, yeah. let's check. Uh. Yeah, Avadana. Okay, let's see. Uh. Given to the type of Buddhist literature, uh, correlates past life ritual deeds. Uh, uh. Yes, Avadana is a past life ritual deeds of Shakyamuni. Uh, so you can just write it down. Uh. Uh, basically, uh, Avadana is not the most authentic and ultimate information in terms of the Buddhism. Oh, maybe I have to let you know. Huh? Uh, class, uh, basically in Buddhism, the information has been classified for four types. Huh? One we call it is the ultimate. Okay. Uh, the ultimate, basically, uh, the, the condensed is about the five aggregates, four noble truths, eight noble paths, but just some of them. And the second type of information uh, is more like an antidote, huh? meaning to say it tries to solve the issue. Okay. Huh? Well, it is more in the Majjhimanikaya, uh, it's more emphasized on the samadhi, uh, the meditation. Abzuba, uh, the founder's contemplation is to conquer the attachment, all right. And uh, the uh, voila, then the metabawana is try to conquer the anger. You see, so this is the second type, and the third type is more uh, to. I mean, uh, 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 the third type is more to try to uh, uh, conventional truth. Okay, so to fulfill. I mean, uh, what, what the people generally think. Huh? So uh, the, the, uh, there will be some story in warfare. Huh? Once we talk about this one, the third one is the conventional truth. Huh? Okay. And, uh, and, and basically, it's, uh, you see, uh, uh, if, if you have heard, have you ever heard about that? Huh? There's a one um, uh, Sumangala, uh, how to say, uh, uh, how to say, uh, 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 there's one layman, okay, he, he, was a, he, he is a Brahmanism. He used to bow to the five direction. Okay, uh, so he bows is uh, based on the theory of uh, uh, of the Brahma uh, of, the, of the Brahmanism. Uh. But Shakyamuni, after knowing this, Shakyamuni didn't say no to what the practice, but he would, he would try to redefine. Uh. So he said, if you bow to the east, it represent your parents; the west, it represent a teacher. So this is the third type. Uh. Okay, uh. and then uh, uh, and, and the last one is the sutra. Uh. Even though it's the ultimate truth, but it help. I mean, it, it remind people, it inspire people for being good. Okay, huh? so in our Mahayana, huh, we got so many sutra, huh? like Di Zhang Jing, uh, all this. Huh, you see, even though uh, we don't see any five aggregate, uh, but they got some But uh, uh, basically, a lot of karma concept inside the Di Zhang Jing. So after people they listen now, huh, they will behave good. Not only our Di Zhang Jing only, huh, uh, but basically you can see um, most of the religions. They are in this aspect. I mean, they, they inspire people for being good. Okay, so we have four type of the sutra. Avadana is in the category, the last one, basically the avadana. So uh, sometimes, uh, uh, according to the study, uh, they integrate uh, the uh, uh, they integrate the story and the legends, uh, which is common and popular at that time, and they they they, they integrate with the shakyamuni. And uh, people will feel happy because uh, there's a Buddha there, and, and yet you will try to make people huh, behave well. Huh? So uh, I think the proper name is this. Uh, sorry. Huh? So this is the proper name for what I'm saying. Huh?
Siddhanta. Hmm. Okay, class, take a look. So this is the four siddhanta, uh, mandate or ordinary modes of expression. Second is the individual treatment. The third one is the diagnostic treatment for the moral disease, the perfect and the highest truth. Okay, so this is in the more proper English. Can you please just copy that? Okay, four siddhanta, we call it now. So meaning to say that uh, the avadhanas uh, is four to the category number one or two. Uh, it's the mandate of the ordinary mode of expression or it's an individual treatment. Huh? Uh, this is recommended by Nagarjuna. Huh? It's quite famous. Huh? Okay, finish. Elena said it. Okay, huh? yes. Okay, class. Um, uh, class, uh, basically, the four sitanta uh, is very important nowadays. It relates to the authentic of the information. Okay, class, uh, basically, uh, there's a group, okay, especially the who study Nikaya, uh, especially the forest type monk, uh, they will always mention that, oh, we are. Our Buddha Dharma is the most authentic. It is a real Buddha saying. Huh? And also they will try to quote maybe uh, according to study from the Japan scholar huh, to prove that uh, they are quite authentic. Why? Because they could try to check huh, uh, maybe the sutra huh, uh, by using arche archaeological uh, ways, they will, will prove that oh, their information is very authentic. It's before the Christ uh, uh, maybe 300 years ago. Okay. If, 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 if let's say, the authenticity of information is based on, I mean, uh, this, this way, meaning to say that all Mahayana and the Tibetan Buddhism will be denied already, the facts. Okay. So, so I think this four Siddhanta is the good solution. Okay. Uh, basically, the origin uh, of the Buddhism, we don't check uh, whether, uh, we don't check through the archaeological way. You see. The most important is the condense. Okay. Uh, you see, uh, nowadays, uh, 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 I mean, uh, uh, Buddha has been parin in Barambana for more than 2,000 years, all right. For me, I start right the Four Noble Truths, Eight Noble Path. Okay, it is the Dharma. 
Sally, if I write a four noble truth, eight noble path, now, today, in 2021, two, okay, it is the Dharma, or it is not the Dharma. Even though it is not a Buddha say, I am the one who write it. But do you consider that this is the authentic information? Yes or no? Elena no. Sally? No. No. Unless, yes. no, uh, no, unless you are based on what Buddha has taught. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I base on, but I write into. Uh, if you are based on, then yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. That's what I mentioned because, <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, huh? Because uh, sometimes people are uh, they always emphasize that uh, uh, I mean, uh, the authentic information, okay, like for noble truth, and noble path, it must be the Buddha time, okay? Yeah. They don't really go through the condensed. If let's say nowadays I write, okay, even I mean, uh, as long as the information uh, is regards the truth, that is the truth itself. It might not be really, I mean, uh, the, I mean uh, the information, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, how, how should I put it? Uh, even though the books itself uh, is not thousand years ago, uh, from thousand years years ago until now, you see. So nowadays, uh, in Mahayana, you know, a lot of us should try, uh, according to the academic research, uh, they will notice that, oh, this is not Buddha saying. They say a lot of things uh, have been added add up uh, by, the, by the scholar, I mean, uh, by the people later on. Uh, or by the uh, Buddha uh, disciple, they are not really every word is the Buddha said. So some people they always come up with this, including most of the Mahayana Sutra. Huh? But basically, we don't see it this way because if you see it this way, uh, you, you if you if you say we just only believe for the, the, the Sutra, which every word is the Buddha saying, meaning to say that a lot of things you cannot believe already. So how do we say? Actually, nowadays uh, all Sutra they will begin. Okay. Uh, equ uh, as what I heard from the Buddha, it all begins with this sentence. But how do we uh, believe it? Okay, for example, like Yi Zhang Jing. Yi Zhang Jing, there's no four noble true eight noble path. But we still believe that even though it is not from Buddha mouth, but the condensed, you see a uh, class, but the condensed uh, is fall under this category, Monday of ordinary moods of expression or adapting to the teacher, uh, teaching to the capacity of his hearer, you see or not. It's an individual treatment, you see. So we need to say that when you talk about this, uh, a lot of people, we inspire people to behave good. So we put under this category. Instead, we just say, oh, this is the fake thing. You know what I mean? Ah, because uh, in some people who, just, who study in Nikaya, huh, they just emphasize this is the perfect and highest truth for me. So, so the group number one, two, three, they say, oh, it's the fake one. Ah, you either is number four only, they wouldn't they don't accept number one, two, and three. This is the problem, you see. You know what I mean? Meaning to say uh, the definition of the Dharma is in the category number four only. One, two, three, they just deny. But basically, uh, one, two, three, a lot of information uh, in Mahayana and Tibetan Buddhism, even though some in the Theravada also got a lot of information under group number two, three, and four. You know, not ah, so so we need to say that. Okay, uh, so uh, basically nowadays, uh, the information authentic or not authentic is not that important from the archaeological aspect. It doesn't important. The point is the content. So we'll see what, whether it's a group number one, two, three, four. But of course, uh, if you talk about the uh, talk about the meditation, talk about the parinibbana, that must be the group number one. And the, the group number four uh, to lead us uh, for the liberation, you see, the perfect and the highest truth. Of course, this group of information all right, uh, but of course we need the group number one and two and three or so. Why? Because not everybody ready for the group number four. Am I right? Many people come to temple, they request the peace of the mind. They want to sort settle the family issue. They got a financial problem. Well, we won't solve it through the group number four, right? Ah, you just talk about four number two and eight number part. This problem will be resolved, okay? But but the group number one and two, if, if we really start to solve. This type of problem. You get what I mean? Ah, so that's why in Mahayana, even though uh, we, we buy one for, uh, we do the mantra chanting, it, uh, most of the people don't really need the liberation. Uh, they, they use the mantra, they use this to solve the issue, to get the peace of the mind, a momentary even though. So you get what I mean? Ah, so next time, uh, if people say, uh, oh, the sutra is fake, uh, hold on first. Okay. Uh, fake and it's not fake, it's not that important. We check the condensed in the first place. Uh, see, if they are group number one, two, three, we accept it, but we have to, but we, we cannot misinterpret uh, the information number four is 
uh, the infant uh, the group one information as a group four can say so lah, huh? we, we, we can misinterpret it but category must be very good so that will be fine already if you have this perception meaning to say that whatever sutra in the Mahayana and Tibetan will be acceptable by you am I right you will accept all because we need different group of information not only the group number four only ah, so uh, for those are uh, huh, very emphasize the originality one uh, they only recognize the group number four only. The rest, they don't believe it. So they very limit themselves. So it ends up that you just, you just, you just a little bit dharma only. You, you, you can't speak much already. Okay. Uh, so this is, uh, Avadana basically is four under category number one and two. Uh, this is uh, Satanta. Uh, well, I, 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 I don't feel, I think this English is not good enough of the way I see it. Uh, let me see uh, the four Siddhanta Buddhists. Uh, okay. I want to check the better English. Uh, uh, okay, so I think this is better. Class, you see, you check for me whether it is, it is this English, it is better or not. It is a better expression. The worldly point of view, the individual point of view, the therapeutic point of view, the supreme point of view. It, it is better English. If compare just now, is this the better one? Okay, uh, let's see. Yeah. It's better, huh? You see, yeah. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, the theory of the four Siddhanta is an extension and development of the two truth story. The first corresponds with the conventional truth. The fourth is the supreme point of view. You see, this is the supreme point of view. Number one, two, and three is more for the conventional truth. All four are affirmed as truth, you see, and not mutually contradictory. Thus, ultimately, there are different point of view concerning one reality. I think this English is better. Oh, okay, oh. So some people doubt that the possibility, okay, I think there will be enough. Oh. So class, uh, maybe after the class, you can just go to this website. Oh. Uh, this is from the Buddhist Life Journal. Oh. You can go deep regards this, okay. Oh. So please copy down, okay. Oh. Uh, as a uh, homework, uh, because uh, as a Mahayana, uh, we used to be challenged uh, by the Theravada, oh, your information is not authentic. Uh, so this four Siddhanta uh, uh, provides a good perspective view uh, to, to be more tolerant and more accept, uh, and okay, could be more tolerant, tolerant to, to all the information. Uh, okay. okay, so so this is uh, four Siddhanta. Uh, Okay, next, let's take a look. Huh? Is this paragraph? Huh? Okay, can you check for me the reference number 33? Huh? Uh, anger can destroy the hundred of kappas of the good. Huh? 33 is what to try, is it? Huh? Sorry, I don't know. I think maybe some commentary. Class, it's supposed to be some commentary. Huh? Okay, class, uh, now we go to the condenser. Uh, huh? So uh, basically, uh, for this whole paragraph, uh, if you understand, okay, it's always talk about what is the advantage for being patient, and what is the flaw for being angry. Huh? Basically, once you recognize uh, the advantage of the uh, of patient and know the, this shortcoming of the angry, then you will try to be more tolerant. All right, huh? Well, this is something is quite common for us. Uh, huh? So first thing, we believe that uh, we can't we can't hate the hatred okay huh? we don't eye for eye ear for ear we don't do this or huh? not eye for eye at huh? all okay meaning to say we try to be tolerance okay we try to be forgive so this is all the perception is common into this huh? but in outside what the mandate where they don't really they don't really believe they don't really think it they don't really take it huh? so they still believe sometimes it's eye to the eye huh? see? so you see uh, this is our perception now huh? This is this this is the perception to shape our world. See, you 
You see, uh, one, uh, we shouldn't take revenge. Why? Because the revenge cannot undo the harm. The anger will increase the sorrow. We will be more restless and distressed and create more damages, all right? Okay, class, from the bottom of your heart, do you fully agree with all this statement? Yeah. Yeah, we fully agree. It's very important because once you agree, uh, then you will believe. And once you, when you, once you believe, so your heart will go this way already. But basically, the Monday week, they won't do so, you see. Huh? So you see, we, we, uh, basically, we saw the war, huh? especially after the 911, you see. So American, huh, they, they, I mean, uh, they had, uh, I mean, uh, they, they have, a, they, they, they tried to incur the war huh? and against the Iraq, you see. So this has tried to use the anger to, uh, to uh, I mean, uh, to solve another anger issue, something like that, huh? you see. Huh? Okay, uh, one, uh, once we believe it, then uh, we will try to use the other way. Like, oh, like that. Then next, let's take a look. Uh, oh. Okay, if that's the case, so what happened? Uh, oh? mm, maybe uh, we, uh, it is good for us to put to the, our present situations uh, and take a look. Uh. Okay, you see uh, now the Junta in Myanmar. Uh, Myanmar is the Buddhism country, you see. Now the Junta, they try to, I mean, uh, they try to comf they try to seize the power uh, from the Aung San Suu Kyi, you see, and and they call themselves a government. The protest is until now is still prevailing, you see, never stop, you see, and people keep on dying uh, just for the democracy, you see, you know? okay, uh, so it seems that the people are, uh, I think, uh, they are undergone the frustrations, anger, of uh, all the time, uh, okay, just want to restore the democracy, uh. okay. So the way you you see, uh, how to how do we relate the patients uh, to this type of case? Uh? Elena, what do you think? Uh? How do we relate and uh, forgive uh, to this case? Uh? People is easier said than done. Uh. For them at this stage, uh, I mean, we can tell them that you know, for them you will increase more suffering for the people and so on. Mm -hmm. But I would say it's not easy for them to accept it. Mm. Yeah. I mean, for so many years, for so many years, they are fighting against the Junta. And yeah. suddenly we have the Aung San Suu Kyi coming up. So they are very happy with Aung San Suu Kyi. Mm. And um, because of that, the Junta will not be happy at the other side. So that's why they want to grasp back the power. So it's, I would say, uh, what? Mm. Very difficult, very difficult to solve. It seems the issue just like a Gaza Strip, like, oh, quite similar. Oh. Ah, I mean, the conflict there, oh, there's uh, quite many things that oh, interlap together. Oh. It's not that easy to resolve the issue, see, you know? okay, oh. even though there's a Buddhist. Oh. But, uh, if you, but of course, uh, maybe something we say, if you talk about the casualty and the death, uh, oh, uh, I think uh, uh, Myanmar, uh, the death case is not as much as maybe in, in Gaza Strip. Like, because Gaza Strip, the war have never stopped before, even for a thousand years. Uh, because uh, same one holy place, uh, uh, Jesus also from there. <laughs> then, <laughs> then the Moses also from there. Okay, so this is the conflict between the religions. Uh, uh, okay, uh, then here is Aung San Suu Kyi is with Gaza. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean uh, how, should, how should I put it? Meaning to say that here the issue is a little bit different. The conflict is between the government and also the civilian. Uh. This is the issue between them. Uh. You need to say the civilian, the will, uh, the will, they want a democracy, but the junta um, is not willing uh, to give up. And yet they have the power, they have the gun power. So that is the issue. Sally, what do you see? How do you view this? Actually, I went there before, but uh, everybody seems to be very scared of them. And it's very, very difficult. Uh. Mm. I've been there. Yeah. You see, they're very uh you cannot simply talk. Uh. Once you talk in one case already, somebody will report you. So so I think uh they got so many monk days, it's about four hundred thousand monk days. Huh? Yeah. So hopefully the monk, I mean uh, it is good the monk uh try try to avoid in this type of politician, but one they the, should they should. No, they, 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 they try to avoid, they should avoid. And then one the civilian now, they need a peace of mind. They come to the temple. I think that's good. 
So the temple will play roles uh, to pacify them, to make them feel, com to comfort them uh, due to the inequalities, the way they see it. Uh. Because mm -hmm. of the junta, I've been in Myanmar also before. Uh, they, they talked to me, they said, oh, our government just not fight, fighting with me. They don't know how to run the economy. So uh, basically, uh, there's one Seattle, uh, he, he is a uni graduate student. So after graduate, he goes, he went to sell the coffee. He said, I don't have any job. So I'm selling the coffee. So later on, I go for meditate. Oh, I can meditate very well. So I become the Seattle already. A lot of people they I mean, uh, they, they run from the country, become the refugees due to the Jundala. They got a lot of um, grump. They got a lot of hatred to, to it. Uh, I, I read one article that say, uh, luckily, the Myanmar, they are, they are all Buddhists. If they are not the Buddhists, uh, the Junta could be worse. Because a lot of people, they can be very patient, you see. Uh, the way they see it, uh, they say, if, if they, they are not, the, if the Myanmar is not the Buddhist, uh, the situation could be very, very worse, even worse than now, many, many times. Uh, now it's, it's go to the itol, uh, how to say, uh, intolerable level. Now, uh, now it's intolerable level. But it's already 30, 40 years already, this situation. Uh, but Buddhists can tolerate until to this level. But if you if other people come or uh, not Buddhists, uh, it could be very worse. Maybe 10 years already, eruption already, not until now. So some people they, they claim that uh, uh, Buddhists can tolerate until 30 years, 40 years now. You see. Okay, so that's uh, I mean uh, hope hopefully the monk they uh, can really help out uh, the civilian there uh, to, to console and pacify them. Uh, uh. Okay. Uh. Okay, uh, so this is about this. Uh, uh, then, um, okay. So because, okay, right. Mm. Yeah, you see, it said, uh, uh, once there's an anger, you can destroy 100 kappas of the good. Uh, uh, okay, uh, so the, the anger will, will destroy all the good. Uh, uh, okay, they got a few karma. Uh, uh, number one is the disagreeable appearance. Number one. Uh, uh, okay, uh, uh, well, basically, I think uh, if you be reborn in the Myanmar uh, uh, with this uh, government, uh, there must be some, we call it as a collective karma, uh, uh, collective karma. So you reborn in this uh, country, uh, and they will be suffer there. Uh. But of course, uh, uh, even though the will is it, they're suffering, there's a collective bad karma. But within the bad karma, we can see so many good karma. Uh, uh, just like here in Malaysia, you see, now we strike 6,000 cases, you see. Not, but you and I, you see, we are still okay, you see. It seems that uh, in, uh, uh, of course, we have to be very careful. Uh, so we need to say that in 6,000 people, uh, some people, they, they pass away due to the, uh, the conviction, okay, uh, due to the infection, they pass away. So some people, uh, quite a big group of people, uh, uh, they're infected. Some, they recover. Some, they're very mild. Some, is quite serious. Some, once they recover, the, if, uh, the effect is still there. Some recover, they feel nothing. You see, you see, and, and we are the group, we are still uninfected yet, you see. So meaning to say that in one big karma, uh, we call it as a collective karma, uh, we can see so many differences between them. Of course, we now, in the present moment, we decide our, our fate. Whatever we think now, uh, now we decide our fate. Okay, uh, uh, but of course, uh, there's a collective karma. But uh, why, why it will be different uh, is because uh, in the present moment, how you decide for yourself. So that is, I mean, um, it also happened the same thing, uh, even though in Gaza Strip and also in Myanmar. Uh, um, there must be some people, they, they are, they, they, uh, I mean, they have, they have a good living there, even though uh, the way we see it, they are quite bad. Must be some people is quite living quite good there. Uh, some people could be very worse. Some people may be in the middle. Just something like that. Uh, okay, so next. Uh, uh, this is the, the bad karma. What's the consequence? It's a disagree appearance. Uh, you look ugly. You'll be tactless speech because you will speak something uh, very bad, okay, if, if in the angry. Uh, they're abandoned by the good people because the uh, good people will get frightened uh, by the hot temper people. <coughs> then you start to pick it. Yeah, I think uh, that's true because uh, basically if you lost a patient, uh, uh, you will easily break, break the precept. Uh, like you do the cleaning. Uh, if you don't have the patients or uh, they got so many ants, right? So you just kill all together and do the cleaning at the same time. Is this correct? <laughs> but you have the patient and you have the one by one to remove them to, over, to protect all, all the ants, right? <laughs> Same uh, uh, whether if, uh, 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 how well you observe the priest also depends on your patients, you see. Uh. Then the regression, you see, uh, 
then uh, 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 meaning to say that they will you fall to the evil destiny or you will be regressed. Okay. So this is the point that like opposite, we got the five virtue, all right. So now uh, we commence on the first three pyramid, we do the conclusion for three of them. Huh? So Sally, your turn to read. Commence on the first three parameters. The transcendence of giving precepts and patience, mostly taught by laity, are the provisions for accumulating vast blessings. The cause for a physical body like that of a Buddha. These parameter, parameters of giving precepts and patience further need discussion here to illustrate how the six parameters are practices required to become a Buddha. This can be explained in three ways. One, the focus of practice for monastics is concentration and wisdom. So, although the first three transcendents should be should also be practiced by monastic people, the sutras indicate that Buddha taught them mostly to the laity. In particular, the bestowing of wealth and things is an important deed for lay buddhi, a lay devotees. Monastic people can only give according to the strict, according to the strictures within which they live. If, like the laity, they accumulate wealth and material things in order to give, this will lead to many impermissible faults. Two, the Buddha has perfect blessings and wisdom, so he is called the honored one of two perfections. The Buddha's perfect blessings and wisdom come from his practicing the deed that brings forth blessings and wisdom. This is like taking a journey to somewhere far away. One needs to prepare enough provisions, traveling expenses, food, and so forth. Bodhisattvas practice for many kalpas to become Buddhas. Blessings and wisdom are their provisions for becoming Buddhas. Of the two types of provisions, the first three transcendents are provisions for accumulating vast blessings and superior deeds, which are necessary to become a Buddha. With regard to the bodies of Buddha, of Buddhas, the sutras vary in differentiating four bodies, three bodies and two bodies. Basically, they can be divided into the Dharma body and the physical body. The Dharma body is the great body with perfect enlightenment of the Buddha realm, which realizes the absolute truth and thereby becomes a Buddha. The physical body is the solemn appearance of a Buddha, which is adorned with boundless blessings. The first three transcendents are the causes and conditions for a physical body like that of a Buddha. The last three, mostly taught by two monastic are provisions for wisdom and the Buddha body and the Dharma body. Okay, thank you so much.
Finish, Sally, Elena. Finish. Okay, thank you so much. I remember one case. Uh, uh, do you know that there's a lot of Tibetan monks already have immigrants to the Indian Dharamsara? You heard about that, right? Okay, uh, uh, I think it's about uh, 1950 or 60 something. At that, at that particular period, the Communist Party tried to evade the whole Tibetan, uh, the whole Tibet, and and they realized that they must take over the. I mean, they want to take over the governor, government, the, the governance of the Tibet. Uh, in Tibet, there the, uh, there's a union uh, between the religions and the uh, and the government uh, and the governing and the governance together. Uh, so meaning to say that you are the you are the Dalai Lama, and you are the same time. You are the king who rules the whole Tibetan, to, to, hold, to rule the whole Tibetan. Uh, but they don't want to bow down to the colonies. So most of them run away and go to the Indian Dalamsara. But some have been, have been caught. So according to the bibliography, they say, oh, when they get caught, they're forced to destroy and keep on torture them every day. All right. And, and, and they have to support themselves by keep on memorizing the sutra. All right. Since they forced them uh, to, to renounce, uh, to de destroy, but, but they decline. So it seems they keep on struggling them and they keep on to just, to, uh, how to say, uh, mentally uh, torture them until they want, un until to make them give up. Okay. So some have been due for 20 to 30 years after torturing her. Uh, after one, once they, uh, once they have been relieved, uh, uh, quite a number of monks uh, still claim that uh, no matter how they treat us, we forgive them. Uh, so it seems that uh, even though 20, 30 year torture uh, can really make people hatred a lot, but some they said they want to forgive. The reason is uh, they choose to forgive just to make themselves feel more comfortable in the first place. Of course, uh, once we forgive the enemy, it doesn't mean that you agree with them. Okay. Uh, and, and it doesn't mean you have to stay together with them. Okay. You should run away, go to India, but you forgive uh, mentally, uh, you will recover the drama. And then you can continue your journey. Uh, so I think this is a quite example uh, I see from the Buddhist spiritual. Uh, they can really, they, they really do what the Buddha said. So finally, uh, they can, I mean, uh, they can sustain very well until now. Uh, but if let's say they cannot forgive, uh, uh, the drama is there. Uh, so maybe you cannot sleep every day with a bad dream uh, for being tortured. You know? uh, the way they use is very crush, it's very cool. You know? uh, but the communist is the Jew, you see. So this is same with the violence family, uh, uh, violence uh, within, uh, within the family. Uh, uh, if, if, I mean, uh, especially the women have been tortured already, you see? So even though you forgive, uh, uh, you, 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 for, you, you forgive the other party, but it doesn't mean that forgive means that you still have want to stay together. You should run away already. You should stay in the different place. Uh, 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 by forgiving just to make ourselves feel better. Uh, uh, so I think this is quite important. Uh, so one day maybe we will, we will need it all. Uh, and then hopefully that, uh, I mean, uh, I, I, uh, so that we can just keep us, we, we are able to sustain and continue our living. Uh, okay, class, uh, uh, what we highlight the three part, two, three paragraph is the conclusion for the six pyramid. Uh, basically class, the pyramid uh, for number one, two and three, giving, uh, precept, also patience, are mainly focused to the late man. Okay, uh, and the last two parameters is the wisdom and the jhana. They are mainly focused to the monastery. Uh, why? Because our status are different. Uh, Man, they have more time to do meditation, so they can be focused in this too. Uh, layman, you do your job, okay, you got you earn some money, so you can do the offering in terms of the giving. Uh, okay. And since you're exposed to many people, you have, you have to be patient. You have to deal with a lot of human problem. And then you have a challenge with the, your precept because uh, you have to, you are living in the mundane world. Whereas uh, uh, this six pyramid uh, is quite re uh, relevant to the Buddha. Uh, to the Buddha, uh, Buddha we, uh, there's a two perspective with how to see the Buddha. One is regards, I mean the Dhamma, the, I mean uh, the, uh, the Dhammakaya, okay. Second is about the physical body. Well, uh, if let's say, okay, uh, I mean uh, the physical body, uh, why Shakyamuni physical body looks so solemn uh, and also looks so great is due to the accumulation of pyramid number one, two, and three. Uh, so this is according to the Sutra. Uh, 
Whereas at the Tamakaya of the Buddha, why it can be so great, so deep in wisdom, is still to the pyramid number five and number six. Okay, so this is uh, this is how how the pyramid are quite relevant to the layman and also uh, I mean uh, to, to the layman and the monk, and also how how is it relate uh, to the uh, to the attainment of the Buddha. So this is. What we see here are number one and number three. Let's take a look to the second. Now you see, yeah, the first three tra uh, transcendence are provision of for accumulating vast blessing and superior deeds necessary to become Buddha. So meaning to say, the first three uh, is very important uh, for the Buddha. Uh, okay, and then uh, this is the better words. Uh, you see, one we call it as the Dharma body. One is the physical body, uh, physical body. Uh, well, basically, the physical of the Buddha, huh? see whether you like it or not. According to the Sutra, uh, the Buddha eye is a blue color one, okay, huh? blue color. Huh? Uh, the ear can reach to the shoulder one, huh? can reach to the shoulder. And Buddha got 40 teeth, 40 teeth. And once uh, Buddha tried to, uh, I mean, uh, uh, try to uh, make the tongue come out, the tongue is able to cover the whole face. Yeah, yes, okay. Huh? Then the hand is so long and you can reach the knee. Okay, oh. So this is the foot of the Buddha, oh, but it's very flattened. Okay, oh. It's very flattened. Okay. So Buddha hand, oh, you can see this oh, uh, like the duck hand, oh, you know. Duck got this one. Oh. Uh, I mean to help in swimming. How do we call it? Web. Web, ah uh, yeah, I uh, got the web. Okay, oh. Well, so uh, this is the 80 characteristic of the Shakyamuni uh, from the Buddha. Okay. If let's say this type of people, huh, you go to walk to the Basa in Alam Damai, you think what is the response from the crowd? <laughs> they will be too frightened, right? Uh, no, not frightened. You will become a... Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> alien, this will be alien. You see, uh, so, so, so basically what I say is the truth. Meaning to say the 32 mark of the Buddha huh, is, something, uh, uh, is something where the Buddhists, uh, they try to find out the best feature from all the animal and they are true to the body of the Shakyamuni. Do you get what I mean? So we can't fully, we can't fully accept it because why? <laughs> it's what I described by Elena, I feel disgusting already. How, how come like that? Oh. But, but it, is, it is in the text, you know, all the best feature from the animal, they all put to the Buddha body oh, in order to show the respect and the admiration to the Buddha. <laughs> This we call it as 32 marks, you know. Let me show you how. Uh, the more you know, uh, I think Elena will be more disgusting. Uh, how come all these things happen? Uh, I said 32 marks. Uh, uh, you have to know it uh, because one day uh, people may discuss. Uh, we will talk because now we talk about the physical body of the, uh, body of the Buddha. So we will type 32 marks. Uh, Buddha. Uh. Yes, a physical characteristic of the Buddha. Okay, let's take a look. Huh? Okay, or we call it the two sides of the great man. Huh? Okay, the 32 side of the great man. Let's check. Huh? 32 marks. Now you see, number one, level fit. Okay, huh? levy fit. It is correct. The correct language are levy fit, meaning to say that our, our foot, huh, there will be some curve here, like. Levy meaning to say the foot is the totally flat. Is this correct? Ah, okay. No up. No, uh, no up. Yes, no, no up. up. No up. Second, thousand spoke wheel side on the feet. Okay, uh, this is still look normal. Huh? Long slender fingers. Okay. It means what? Like an animal, right? All, all the fingers are the same, right? Long slender finger, right? Uh -huh. A long slender finger. Huh? And let's take a look again. Huh? Okay, huh? Full size here, huh? full size here, okay, up in step, huh? tight like a royal step. See the tight, huh? hand reaching below the knees. You see, okay, height and stretch of arms equal. You see, height and the height and stretch of the arms equal. What does it mean? Height and stretch. Oh, okay, uh, you, uh, the stretch is like this, right? What, what does that mean? Height and the stretch is equal. You don't understand how. No? Never mind, we, we go through the one we understand. Every hair root dark color. Okay, huh? looks normal. Huh? Body hair graceful and curly, all right? 
curly oh. golden hue body 10 foot aura around him i think this is normal lah, oh. so source palm shoulder and crown of the head well rounded okay it means what it means it means what it's very calm okay. so many all these things right uh, okay. ah. all right then continue have a look now area below armpit well fit well filled Fill with what? We are empty, right? Um, we are empty. Uh. So, so meaning to say it's different. A lot of fat. <laughs> Lion shaped body. Okay, it doesn't look like a human. Huh? Body erect and upright. Okay, full round shoulder. 40 T's. I think human, we don't have 40 T's, right? No. Huh? What animal got 40 T's? Huh? Okay, teeth wide, even, and close. Even, the meaning to say, all oh, the teeth is even now. Huh? Uh, it doesn't show with a different shape. Huh? How can it be even? Your premolar and your front teeth cannot be the same shape. Huh? Yeah, because we are omnivore, right? Omnivore, uh, uh, omnivore meaning to say that some yeah. people take meat. According to the history of Shaka, when you take meat, right? So, the, the, so meaning to say there must be some teeth that must be sharp, you see? We all even, how do you chew the meat, right? So it sounds not that logic, lah. How I see, jaw like a lion. Lah. How is jaw like a lion? Jaw like a lion. Jaw, wow, but it's very big, lah. Very square. Oh, very square. Very square. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, then let's take a look. Oh, saliva they improve the taste of all food. This is normal. Oh. long tongue and broad. Yes, it can cover the whole face. Okay. <laughs> Voice deep and resonant, good lah. Huh? Eye deep blue. What animal eye with the deep blue? Huh? Any animal? Hey, contact lines. Huh? Contact. Hey, <laughs> uh, for the European people, they just the, the pupil is the blue, right? Not the whole eye, right? Uh, just the pupil near, right? Okay. Huh? Then the rest, uh, huh? okay. Eyelashes like a royal bow. Bull. Eyelashes were a royal bow. What does that mean? The bull is the, the cow. Right? <laughs> no, no. How, how is the eyelash? Very curl. Very, very curl. Oh. oh, okay. Huh? Then next, 31. Huh? Why Una curl that emits light between eyebrow? Okay, this is beautiful. Flashy yeah, okay. uh, protuberance on the crown of the head. Okay. So they Flash, got this yeah, yeah. characteristic also, you see or not? Plus, uh, you can just uh, highlight. Huh? So you know, uh, once we talk about the physical body, we will mention 32 major characteristic and 80 secondary characteristic, which all stated in the Buddha and, and uh, uh, is according to the Sutra, I see. So, so people, they don't, don't believe, they, they don't really believe all this, lah, huh? because uh, some look like quite normal, you see. Huh? <laughs> you see or not, you see, uh, the teeth are unblemished and with no plug. Some looks okay, lah, huh? but some are not sounds logic. Huh? Yeah, so it suggests that uh, maybe people who uh, really put all the best feature from animal to the body of the Shakyamuni, you see. No? Okay, next, let's take a look. Uh. Okay, uh, so we finished this part. Uh, uh, it's number one, two, and the three. Now we go to the pyramid of the diligence. Uh. Uh, why uh, diligence is not mentioned is yeah, yeah, Elena. Any any questions? Uh, uh Sifo, on the item number three, yeah. Uh, four bodies, three bodies, and two bodies. Yeah, this one, right? Uh, yeah. Yes. Any question? No. What do you mean by four bodies, three bodies, and two bodies? Oh, here are uh, you mean? Ah. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, four body, three body, two body. Okay. Okay, class. Uh, basically, in Mahayana. Uh, we mentioned that uh, the body of Shakyamuni can be a four body, three body, two body. Once we talk about the four body, number one is a person, it's the Dhammakaya body. Okay, the body which is with the infinite. Uh, okay, uh, how much is the base, is the space? Okay, how big is the universe? How big is the Dhamma, Dhamma body? Second is the transformation of the body. Transformation of the body meaning to say that uh, wherever you ask, you request Shakyamuni, Shakyamuni will transform and show in front of you. 
So this is the second body, okay? Oh, we call it as a transformation body. And the third one is the karma body. As you see, Shakyamuni, oh, he married, okay? He is an Indian, so this is the third type of the body. And one more body, yeah, actually it's the same integration with the second body. So four body yeah, is very common like, in Mahayana, okay? Uh, Elena, uh, let me give you the proper words in English. Uh, huh? Let's take a look. Huh? Uh, Elena, do you, do you remember the Mandarin? Uh, fa shen, bao shen, bian hua shen, ying hua shen. Do you remember that? Ah, so <laughs> this is the four body. La. <laughs> it means this four. Huh? Okay, so let me show you the proper English. Let's uh, huh? Yeah, four body. Uh, is it? Yeah, four bodies of the Buddha. Huh? Okay, let's see. Huh? Oh. oh, maybe feel rough. Huh? Hmm. Then I can I take a try, Kaya. Ah, this is the one of Sambo Gaya, okay, one body. Tama Gaya, second body. Okay, so this is a uh, uh, Ni Mana Gaya. Okay, uh, Elena, you can copy. Ni Mana Gaya is a physical manifest body. Sambo Gaya, ho, it's just like a body sattva, ho, can manifest Sambo Gaya. So Dhamma Gaya, Dhamma Gaya is the truth itself, fashion. So this is a fa shen, ha. Sambo gaya is the bao shen, ha. Uh, Sambo gaya is a jing hua shen, yimara gaya is a bao shen, ha. You copy it first, then I give you the Chinese words, ha. Lena, finish. Okay. Uh, do you need the Mandarin words for it? You always chant. No need, uh, no need. Uh, okay, uh. So you understand that uh, this four body is always a chant. Uh, qing qing fa shen fu, yuan man bao shen fu. Uh, it's all this thing. Uh, okay. So we need to say you don't understand what, you, what were you chanting for many years already. You don't know. <laughs> you should go to Terawada. How come you come to Mahayana? Ay, alamak. Okay, okay. Well, I think maybe this is the affinity. Huh? My affinity is to serve the banana Buddhist, banana Buddhist. Huh? I play, this is my karma to serve you all. Huh? Okay, next. Uh, huh? It's the pyramid of the diligence. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Leung, your turn to read. Uh, please try, Mr. Leung. Huh? Are you here, Mr. Leung? Mr. Leo, on the mic, please. You haven't on the mic yet. Uh, yes, I'm here. Yeah, please. The it. parameter of <coughs> diligence, verse 136. The parameter of diligence, verse 136. The transcendence of diligence as taught by the Buddha is the provision necessary for the attainment of blessings and wisdom. One's mind should be in satiable as fast as the ocean. Even when one's strength is exhausted, one's mind should never stop. Diligence can universally give rise to all good deeds and thereby to all virtues. Of the two kinds of provisions, blessings and wisdom, Although diligence is said to belong to wisdom, the parameter of diligence as taught by the Buddha is actually common to both blessings and wisdom. Although right diligence has already been explained when discussing the Dharma common to the three vehicles, 
the diligence of the great vehicle has a more profound meaning. To practice the bodhisattva deeds means to focus on the endless Dharma realm, approaching and paying homage to all Buddhas, learning and practicing all Dharmas, adorning all lands, saving all sentient beings, cutting off all afflictions, completing all virtues. Everything is fully done to the extreme of space and in the entire as vast as space and as deep as the ocean. Great vows, great deeds, and great results result require limitless diligence. So bodhisattvas should have an boundless capacity to practice the transcendence of diligence. Seeking all the Buddha's dharmas and not being satisfied, attaining all virtues and not being contented with just a few. Bodhisattvas should be like the sea that receives the endless outflow of all the rivers. Only when one has such an insatiable mind can one attain the diligence of the great will. Okay. okay. Two examples um, may illustrate this. In the first, two farmers work in the field. Farmer A works hard at harvesting. Okay, okay, you can stop. Oh, thank okay. you. Okay. Mm. A class, take a look. Now we go to the diligence, pyramid of the diligence. Uh, 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 basically, uh, the diligence uh, is common Okay, for the first three pyramid and the last two pyramid. Uh, we, need, we need the diligence to support in order to fully complete the first three and the last two parameters. So that's why you see some, uh, because uh, uh, diligence is, I mean, the value, uh, I mean, the, uh, the value of the diligence should be common to both category. So uh, it is same uh, once we mention eight noble path, okay? Basically the diligence also we separate it. Why? Because our uh, diligence is essential for all, par uh, I mean, uh, for the other seven uh, uh, for, uh, for precept, samadhi and prashnya. Without the diligence, Three of them cannot be complete. Okay, so we need the diligence is equal for all. So in order to attain to the Buddhahood, number one is the wisdom. Second, uh, ah, second is we call it as what now you see, a blessing and the wisdom. Blessing and the wisdom must be complete, and the blessing meaning to say that is is the physical body. The wisdom is the wisdom of the Buddha. Uh, they also need the diligence to make it complete. You see. So now let's take a look. Huh? Here, class, take a look. This is something which is unimaginable, you see, out of imagination. This is uh, from the Mahayana, approaching, paying homage to all the Buddhas. Okay, huh? so class, can you imagine? This is not common in the Theravada, but in Mahayana. They say if as a Bodhisattva, you have to go to approach all the Buddha in the 10 direction. Okay, huh? Then 
Secondly, you see her, learn all the Dharma. Then you see adorning land, all the land, saving all the standing being, cutting off all the affliction. Okay, ho. a class in Mandarin, Zhong Shen Wu Bian Si Yuan Tu, Fa Men Wu Liang Si Yuan Xue, Fo Dao Wu Shang Si Yan Chen. Okay, so class, you, you chant for so many times. Uh. Now, you understand the English. So, um, you think you think it is your direction, Elena? Do you aim for this? Wow, something is so vast and profound. Yes, Elena? You aim for it? Do you still keep on aiming for it? You chant for many years already, which is? Uncertain or no? Uncertain, uncertain. I don't that? think I'll be so great. I, I don't think I'll be able to even all the dhammas and, uh, you know, uh, all those things, uh, but uh, just try uh, okay. to do as much as can as possible. No, no need to worry. Huh? Now, if you've, got, if you've got any problem which is irritating, which cannot be resolved, huh? so you just answer, oh, dharma is out of imagination. Now, of course, I cannot understand. There will be enough already. Huh? Ah, because nowadays, uh, if you uh, write a science fiction, huh, if you cannot resolve the problem, huh, basically in our time, everything go to the alien now. <laughs> But now they everything go to the quantum physics <laughs> because quantum physics is something of imagination. Huh? So as long as you cannot solve the issue, so you just say, oh, this is, must be something with the quantum physics. In Dharma is the same. It's something you cannot solve. You say, oh, Dharma is out of imagination. That will be fine already. <laughs> okay, you know what is that? What does it mean quantum physics? Quantum physics, it means what you see. Huh? Then, now let's say how you, you want to come to Earth here, right? You can come by car, right? You can drive car here. This is the one of one one way you can come home. Second way, Elena, maybe uh, if let's say you if you are rich enough, uh, you can buy a helicopter. So you you can ride the helicopter and and reach to my roof, and then you by by parachuting you can fall down, right? So either one, right? Either you can you can come either by car or either by helicopter, right? This is a normal world we say. But if you go to the quantum physics, quantum physics means what? Quantum physics is the theory apply. Uh, I mean, now uh, once you analyze the physical world to the atom, okay? Quantum physics only apply to the atom only, which is the small particle, which and 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 cannot. I mean, uh, you, it cannot be smaller, cannot be tiny any more than the atom. Huh? So the rules is different. The the uh, the rule in our in. in in, in, in our modern world now, huh? in our in our world now, you see, uh, if in, according to quantum physics, uh, just now I mentioned Elena, you can only come either by helicopter or by car, right? But in quantum physics, you it happened that you travel by both way. Ah, it happened you 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 you, uh, you drive by both way, huh? But once you open your eyes, you see immediately, uh, there will be one result appear to you, as you wish. But if you don't go to watch it, uh, it happens that, I mean, uh, meaning to say you are coming from two directions to Earth, you see. You understand what I mean? So this is, we call it quantum physics, you see. Ah, but once you see it, then the destination will be, uh, will, uh, I mean, will be determined. If you don't see it, actually all the possibility happen at the same time. In modern words, either or only. But quantum physics happen all the time together, you see. If they got five directions to come here, in quantum physics, meaning to say, it happened concurrently, all the time, simultaneously, you see. Ah, but once you watch it, uh, immediately there will be one fixed to you. So in quantum physics, uh, everything is determined by ourselves, by the observer. Once you see the, the thing, the thing will be determined, you see. So meaning to say that the world is not certain. Everything is depends on us. Our, our view is very important to decide our world. Okay, that's the class for today. So I'm going to see you all uh, 4.30. Okay, bye-bye everyone.